Real quick, before this video starts, I just wanted to add a little note here in the front that there's not going to be hardly any footage shown of the lens with the iris installed versus the lens without the iris installed. That's mainly because my setup for making these videos is just an older cell phone that I've had for years and years, and the camera on it really isn't good enough quality to pick up all those subtle differences in the grayscale and the black levels and things like that. So the footage I did shoot when I was reviewing it and editing this video wasn't really watchable. I, I didn't think it was good enough to post in here. So hopefully that doesn't deter anybody from watching this. Um, hopefully just the info I provide is entertainment enough or you know gives you enough uh, information to at least watch the video through. So with that, I just uh, wanted to put that out there and let's get on to the video talking about the DIY iris that I put on the back of my Panasonic RZ670 projector lens. So as I said in my Panasonic mini review, which I will link up in the corner here for anyone who wants to watch that, uh, I got this Panasonic projector that's sitting behind me on an eBay deal. It was listed four parts because it didn't turn on, and I go into a little more detail in the actual mini review about that. The big thing that actually drew me to this, outside of the fact it has the laser light source, was that you could do a DIY mod to the lens that was relatively basic. It didn't take a whole lot of skill to do, uh, at least the beginning part of that. I'll get into more detail about a more in-depth version of it a little bit later on. So I fashioned my own DIY iris after following the directions online of a few of the members on the AVS forum, which will be linked below. But I made a very crude iris here, which I'm going to get into some more detail about in a minute. Uh, but the reason this is so crude and the reason that projector is sitting there instead of up on the shelf like it was when I did my mini review uh, is because I've already decided uh, that I'm not going to keep this projector uh, for various reasons that I'll get into in my next video about it when I do my AB comparison. But I've decided I'm not going to keep it. So that's why the iris is so crude on here. Uh, it's kind of going against a couple of rules that you want to actually follow when making one of these. But I decided to keep it like this because I knew I wasn't going to keep this projector. I'm going to end up selling it after I get done, you know, doing my content here on my channel with it. Uh, so that's why this is like this. But that's enough about kind of the overview. Uh, let's just get into how I made the iris and, you know, a couple steps and things you have to take with it. So first and foremost, the big one, you need a material to make the iris out of. So it has to be something uh, malleable that you can actually cut and shape, uh, but it also has to be heat resistant enough that it's not gonna burn up or melt in the projector because when you stick it on the back of the lens and then slide the lens in there it's going to be fairly close to that light source and it's going to generate heat so you need to make sure it's not going to melt or burn up so that's the big thing outside of that you're going to need a couple tools uh, for me and what i ended up using and figuring out just a pair of scissors you know utility scissors is probably going to work you're also going to need like a hole saw bit or a circular pattern that you can put on the actual material to cut out, which you're gonna need something that's roughly an inch and a half or 41 millimeters. So in this, I have a one and a half inch bit on here that I used uh, to make my actual metal piece for the iris. Now, after that, you're also gonna need a way to punch out the hole and you can try using a drill bit, depending on the material that may or may not work, depending how rigid that material is. But what I found is this hole punch. This is just a standard hole punch. And I use this biggest piece, which you can see there's still a piece of aluminum in there from what I used. I just put that on there and just stamped it down. And then last but not least, you'll need something to actually give you the iris diameter and what i used was basically just this washer which i don't know the exact size of this washer uh, but this middle part is about 
I think it's like 16 or 18 millimeters on there. And if you look, that lines up pretty much perfectly with the hole that I cut out for the iris. Uh, it's a, you know, slightly bigger, but essentially that's what I used. And I didn't, of course, do any of this with the iris attached to the lens. I did it on a table. But more or less, that's the equipment you're going to need. Uh, so now let's go through kind of just the process and how I ended up doing this. So as I said, you're going to need a material that is not only malleable enough to cut out the actual circles of the iris, but it has to be heat resistant enough that it's not going to burn up or melt. I decided to go the route of what someone else in that forum actually mentioned, and that was go with aluminum like bakeware, essentially. And so at first I did this. I got just a dollar store pizza pan to cut out the iris. And as you can tell in here, it did not work out very well. Uh, I tried to cut the hole and the way this aluminum and everything is set up, it did not work. It just spun when I tried to cut it and just ripped everything apart. And I was like, yeah, that, that's not going to work. It was a good idea, I guess, but yeah, not, not, not going to work <laughs> for that. So what I ultimately settled on was this, just an aluminum lasagna pan. Now I have two pans that came in this set from the dollar store. So I had this one and then another one. This one, I just cut the circle straight out with the bit. But this piece here was from the bottom. I just cut the big rectangle out of the bottom of the pan and made like two smaller rectangles. And then just drew, as you can kind of see here, drew the outline of the circle of the actual drill bit that I have, this the inch and a half. And then just went through with utility scissors and just cut it out, you know, and tried to smooth the edges out to make sure it was round. Uh, and that's what I did. And it's good to have these because you can make, you know, 10 to 12 of these potentially out of this. And you're going to need multiple of these to test out for the reason I'm going to tell you here in the next section. So iris placement is a big tip and a big thing that you're going to have to play with and fiddle with on these. So as you can tell, what I essentially did after, if you see all the circles that are kind of drawn in there in my red chalk pencil, is I essentially just took, if I can sit this on here, this washer and sat it on there and kind of drew the actual iris size out and then punched it with my hole punch. Uh, obviously, I didn't do it with it attached to the lens. I did it, you know, just on a table. But that's what I did. And I just punched the holes all around in a circle until I got the approximate size I was wanting out of this. So when you put these lenses in and out, they rotate to lock and unlock. You slide it in and it connects. You then have to spin it all the way until it locks into place and you'll hear it click. Same thing when you remove it, you have to push the button and then spin it all the way to unlock it and then pull it out. So you have to make sure if you're using lens shift and zoom and focus adjustments on here, you have to make sure that you find where the image is being projected through the back of the lens. Because unless you're perfectly 100% dead center in the middle of the lens, if you just throw the iris perfectly centered in the lens, you're gonna get part of the image getting cropped off in the corners because the image is bleeding over past where the iris is installed. So it's a good idea to have multiple of these kind of cut out and ready to go. And it's good, start right in the center and you know, start with your little iris in the middle, dead center, or as dead center as you can make it. Stick it in there, project the image, put it up there, take a look, see you know what's going on, and then try and adjust from there. That's why it's good to have like those aluminum pans where you can punch out 10 or 12 irises and then you can just play with the placement until you find the one that actually fits correctly for your you know lens shift and throw settings now once that's out of the way and you actually find the actual lens placement that's going to work for you you're technically supposed to do a step that i didn't do on here 
you really want to paint the iris both sides black and either with spray paint or just acrylic paint or something and then hit it with a heat gun or bake it like in a toaster oven if you've got one or a kiln or something and basically heat it up and get all the gas and set all the paint on there uh, because this kind of light silver material the aluminum color is still going to cause reflections inside the lens of the light bouncing around where you want it to be a flat matte black as dark as you can make it to eliminate any sort of reflection going on inside the lens because that can cause issues with your image but since as I said in the beginning of this video I already know I'm going to sell that projector I didn't want to take all those steps to, to kind of paint this and use a heat gun on it and do all that sort of stuff I just very crudely stuck it on here Now, once you've got all that set up and you've painted it and you've done all that, you need to affix it to the actual lens. And again, this is very crude and a lot of people just talk about just use some good quality tape, just plain, clear scotch tape and just make sure your lens is centered in the position you need it and then just run a piece all the way around and push it down. And as long as you don't have any pieces of tape bleeding into where the iris is cut out, you can just kind of affix it on here and it's good. It'll stay in place. And if you need to remove it for any reason, you can just peel the tape and it'll be fine. You'll just want to make sure you clean the lens just to make sure there's no residue or anything on the actual lens. As I mentioned in my mini review, if you really want to, you can get extremely uh, detailed and get a lot better results by going into the actual lens to place an iris like this. If you could break this down from the front or the back and get it in way towards the center, which is gonna give you the best results because the image is gonna be the smallest in the center of the lens before it then blows back up as it goes out. And there's other guys on the AVS forum that have done that, that have gotten really good results. But to be honest, since I, A, do not feel comfortable enough doing something like that on this lens, and B, I know I'm gonna sell this once I'm done making these videos, I did not wanna venture into the various lens elements to try and shove an iris in there and risk damaging the lens. But there is one other easier option that's not as hard, and this is, again is listed in the AVS forum. This is a powered lens. This is the motor cage that's on here. And it's not, you know, that difficult to get this off. You can basically just unscrew it and slide it off. And this little piece here can actually come off and you could sit this lens basically right here where these kind of, you know, little pieces are to uh, attach it to the actual projector and basically just lay it in there and then put the pieces back on and it will hold it in place. So you could essentially do that and that would probably improve the contrast even a little bit better uh, than what this one did. But again, since I'm going to sell this and I didn't want to venture into the lens and risk any kind of damage to it that would hurt the resale value, I just stuck with this here. But a lot of the AVS forum members that have done this said you're still getting like 70 to 75% of the gains of using an iris just by doing this. Something like this is still feasible enough to do. I don't have any equipment to actually measure any of this stuff. I'm just using my eyes. But to my eyes, it does improve the quality. Now, again, you're not gonna get a drastic improvement. You're not going from a standard projector like this to all of a sudden you throw that iris on the back and now you're getting the highest level of black, you know, levels on like some of the most high-end JVCs or something. You know, you gotta stay within the realm of reason here that's not going to happen but when you put that on there and you combine it with the dimming feature you're going to get pretty decent black levels i would definitely recommend putting an iris on the back of these you're going to get better black level you're going to get a better perceived contrast ratio the bright level content because of the amount of lumens as this thing has you're not going to lose a whole lot. I mean, you're going to tame the lumens a little bit, so you're not going to get the full 6,500 lumens that this thing is capable of, even with a brand new laser if you were to buy this straight off the production line. But you're still going to get 
probably somewhere in the range of 2,000, 3,000 lumens, even with that iris put on there, as long as you don't have the dimming feature set to the very lowest setting you can set it on. You know, so you're still going to get good contrast ratio of a bright, you know, part of the scene down to lower black levels. Again, the overall black level, not going to be like some of the highest level JVCs or something that's out there, but it is going to be better than not having the iris on there. So wrapping everything up, yes, I would highly recommend doing something like this all in for the price unless you have to go out and buy the actual tools. For me, I ended up only spending like less than $5 to get the material and everything to do this. And then in terms of time and kind of the ease of doing it, it took me less than an hour to get everything set up. And yes, I, I skipped a step, I didn't paint it black. That would take a little bit of time, you know, to let the paint dry and do all that. But I think it would definitely be a worthy upgrade to do on something like this if this is a projector that you would want in your home theater because there are a lot of positives to doing it so i would highly recommend it uh hopefully this video was informative hopefully i structured it enough so that you could follow along with what i'm doing uh, again the posts and stuff through the abs forum will be linked below and they kind of go into more detail and some of the guys on there have really nice irises that they crafted you know with real precision way better than the crude stuff that i made here so if you're interested in that you know check it out so like I always say, I appreciate all the views, uh, all the feedback I've gotten, all the likes. You know, it really, uh, you know, it's humbling to me. Like I say, I, I really do appreciate it. So be on the lookout. I'm going to have more content coming. I'm going to be working on the third video, the last video of this projector, which is the final kind of wrap up review and the AB with my null projector. And then I've got other content in the works that I, I plan on filming and getting out there. So with all that being said, uh, thank you and I will see you in the next video.